Hello and welcome to Cardiology 101. This is Dr. Shiraz. And today we are going to discuss non ST segment elevation, acute coronary syndrome. Uh, as you know, acute coronary syndrome comprises of two components that is, NSTEMI and unstable angina. Unfortunately, on ECG, these two can present similarly with ST segment depression or T wave inversions. But we can differentiate them on the basis of our cardiac biomarkers. In the case of unstable angina, there may be ECG changes, but we won't have elevated cardiac biomarkers. Another point to notice here is that T wave inversions were also seen during STEMI. So what differentiates between the T wave inversions of NSTEMI or ST segment elevation MI is that in the case of STEMI, there are always ST segment elevations. T wave inversions can comprise them and we can differentiate them from NSTEMI on the basis of those earlier elevations. Another thing to note is uh, NSTEMI can also produce pathological Q waves that we discussed in the STEMI lecture. Q waves can occur with NSTEMI, but they are quite rare with NSTEMI, but they are more common with STEMI. Here is a little comparison between STEMI and non NSTEMI. All right, this is our normal ECG. This is our ST segment elevation. This is our ST segment depression our inverted T wave. So as we know that we discussed the criteria of ST elevation that elevation should be at least two small blocks. Is there any criteria for NSTEMI 2? Well, the depression of one small block is significant, but the depression of more than one small block is very consistent with NSTEMI as we will see in the following ECGs. So if we start looking from lead one, we will see ST segment depressions over here. Similarly, ST segment depression, ST segment depression, depressions over here and here, here, everywhere. All right. So important point to note here is that these ST segment depressions are widespread on the ECG. They are not limited to one area. They can be limited to one area, but they are more widespread on ECG than being confined to one area. This differentiates them from being the reciprocal depression as we discussed in the STEMI lecture. All right. Similarly, in this case, we can have our T wave depressions over here, our ST segment depression and T wave inversions, ST segment depression, ST segment depression, ST segment depression and T wave inversions. Uh, important point to note here or important point that I want to tell here is that the T wave inversions in lead 3 are normal variants. Similarly, in lead V1, there can be T wave inversion in the case of both male and female. In the case of V2, it is normal for women to have T wave inversions. So they cannot be pathological or they can be pathological based on the history given to us. So ST segment depressions, ST segment depressions, when we, whenever we will see this kind of ECG, we will refer the patient for cardiac biomarkers. If they are elevated, then this is NSTEMI. Otherwise, it is unstable angina. In this type of ECG, we can say that for sure this is of NSTEMI. So here we have our T wave inversions, 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 T wave inversions. So in the case of ST segment depression or T wave inversion, you should also look for prominent R wave in that lead. If you go back to the video and check all the ECGs that I just discussed, you will see that whenever there is ST segment depression, the R wave is prominent one as, com as compared to the S wave. So the ratio of R to S is more than one. That is our prominent R wave. I hope this cleared your concept of NSTEMI. If you have any question, comment down below. I will be happy to respond to them. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.